Father's been asking me to make this video for a while. Today, the timing is just right. This is a warning video. Let's cut your flesh. At the beginning of the book of Revelation, there are several warnings to the believing church. That's you. These warnings are very specific and they're very clear. You have to make sure that you know what these warnings mean before you know if you're doing them or not. So let's make sure we know what they mean. Because a lot of you are doing them. The first warning we're going to talk about is the warning of Balak and Balaam. Let's see what these clowns did. I hold a few matters against you because you have those there who adhere to the teaching of Balaam, who taught Balak to put a stumbling block before the children of Israel to eat food offered to idols and to commit whoring. Let's learn some Bible language first so we know what these things mean. Food in the Bible is a spiritual concept. There is the literal food that you eat, which of course you want to be healthy, but there's also the spiritual food that you eat. So when you are eating food offered to idols, in a biblical understanding, a deeper spiritual understanding, what you're doing is you're eating the things that were created to worship idols instead of eating the true word of God, the pure, and undefiled word of God. When the people in Exodus were in the wilderness, they were getting manna from the sky to eat. Manna in Hebrew means, what's this? What's this? It's the revelation of Father, that his food that he's feeding you and feeding your spirit. Jesus was said to have the words of life. That is the bread of life. You want to eat that and not eat things that have been offered up to idols, things that are coming from idolatry. Whoring. What's whoring in the Bible? Well, there's obviously, you know, sleeping around with different people. That's whoring. But the spiritual idea of whoring is always related back to God. It's always related back to worshiping him in a pure, undefiled way. When you mix your worship of the Most High God with things that idols created for their worship, you're whoring. You're mixing. You're becoming lukewarm. Your eyes are supposed to be on the things of God alone, his creation, the way that he designed things, the way that he designed worship to be for him. You're not supposed to be worshiping in the way that idols like to be worshiped. Now that we have that cleared up, let's go back to the story of Balaam and Balak. What did they do? How did they end up cursing Israel? What did those clowns do and how did it end up cursing God's people? Why do we care? Well, because we, the church, are given a warning about this in the book of Revelation. So we should heed this warning. Balaam taught Balak to put a stumbling block before the children of Israel. You'll find this story in Numbers 22 if you want to go take a deep read of it. But I'm going to give you the cliff notes. Balak was the Moabite king and Israel, the army of Israel and all the people were getting pretty close to his kingdom. And that made him very uncomfortable because the people of Israel were the people of God and they had the power of the living God behind them. And that made Balak sweat a little bit. So he hired a man named Balaam. Balaam was a prophet to the nation, so he could hear God, but he wasn't an Israelite. Balaam prayed to God and said, hey, can I curse these people? And God was like, no, you can't. And Balaam pushed the issue and there's a whole donkey thing and you can read about that and study it on your own. But the, the gist of the matter was that Balaam was unable to curse Israel because you cannot curse something that God has blessed. You can't, it just doesn't work. So when Balaam goes to go curse Israel, blessings come out of his mouth and the words get twisted and they become blessings and this makes Balak very irritated. So these two clowns decided to come up with a roundabout way to curse God's people. The only way that they could do it is to entice and seduce God's people to sin and worship idols. So they sent the sexy sexy Moabite ladies into Israel's camp and the ladies seduced them into worshiping at Baal Peor. So Baal Peor is in the Moabite kingdom, and it is the land where they were worshiping sun gods and moon goddesses. God's people then, after mixing with these Moabite women, started to worship in the way that the Moabites worship their gods. They mixed the sun and moon god worship in with their worship of the one true living God. This is no bueno, and it's not just Old Testament stuff. We're warned about it in Revelation. Okay, let's look at where this is all happening. Look over there at Mount Nebo by the Dead Sea. That's the entrance where Moses died entering into the Promised Land. Bel Peor is right beside there. So they're trying to get in over here to the Promised Land. And they're trying to cross the Jordan River and get to where Father says is the Promised Land. Look, Mount Zion right there, okay? What is all this doing? It's 
muddying the waters and making sure that they're not getting to the promised land properly. Think of that spiritually. So when they allowed this into their camp, this mixed worship, the plague was allowed to exist in their camp. They got a plague from it. Two more verses for you to read. Notice the water and the bread. So they weren't eating the bread and the water of God. They were eating the bread and the water of idolatry. 